Okay, morning everybody. Um, welcome to Introduction to Aircraft Design uh, 2022. Um, quick comms check, um, can any of the GT so they can hear me and see the screen? Okay. Thumbs up from everybody. Can uh, can everybody hear me? Great. Thanks very much. Okay. Well, um, thanks for joining. And um, this is the uh, an aircraft designer, a design engineer, and some of the things on that page at the front there, and some of the things you're going to be doing in this course. So there's. The rocket video stuff you saw there was just some outtakes from uh, simulation development. Um, but you're going to be doing some spreadsheet design of a rocket, um, simulating it, and then um, launching it yourself uh, in, in approximately five weeks' time. Um, the, the other pictures on the front page there, we've got a picture of the Magma aircraft, which was built by students at the University of Manchester. Um, so they're all people that studied design the similar way that, that, you, that you are now. Um, most of them were postgraduates by the time they contributed to this, but it's an example of if you study design hard and 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 learn learn from mistakes and develop, um, you, you can make some pretty cool things as an aircraft designer. And that Magma aircraft is in the display area in the foyer in George Beck Building, the engine display area, uh, for a chance for you to go and have a look and see what design looks like when it's kind of done and done and in the air. And then the other pictures there, you, the other project you're going to be doing is building a, a wing or designing a wing and um, some of the kind of stuff about design process about how you start with a set of requirements and then go through to making something and testing it. Okay, um, so slide and okay, so aim of this course is to introduce students to the formal practice of engineering design. If you type um, what is design into Google, um, it gives you all sorts of different answers, but we're really talking about engineering design here. So it's specifically about making things that have a have a purpose rather than just designing something because it looks nice. And I kind of randomly just found three things uh, as I was looking. Arguably the first engineer or designer was Leonardo da Vinci and as a fun, he's done some fantastic drawings and that one's there of his water raising machine so so from 1500 so over 500 years ago. And um, yeah, he was a real engineer he didn't really have any formal training and, or, and the like, but he was a, an amazing design engineer. he could draw he could communicate. Not all of his designs were practical so he tended to design things um, and it it often took hundreds of years later before the technology was there to make them, but he had the creativity to do it. Um, middle one there, Edison and his light bulb. Edison invented countless things, um, but this was a sketch from his notebook when he was sort of sketching out how a light bulb um, makes, he made to, to make a light bulb. And his famous quote about it being 1% uh, inspiration and 99% perspiration is kind of any design engineer would recognize that, that you don't just sit there and invent a light bulb. You, you make hundreds of iterations and test it and go back to the beginning and try and work out things. So it's very much a process that goes round and round. And then the last picture there, something topical. Um, it's the SpaceX Starship. I found a drawing of that. Um, so what a cool thing to be designing right now. You're actually designing spaceships. There's a whole bunch of people whose jobs now is to design spaceships. That must be so good. Uh, when I got this drawing up, I was I was really intrigued to see how tiny the engine is. If you see the bit right at the bottom, um, that's the engine. Um, and in part, it, it looks really small because these things aren't going up. Um, they're not, they haven't got the full sort of payload to Mars on them. So actually they can get away with just one engine in there. But when you see that thing flying, it's a lot of fuel and a, and a very small engine. Okay, so what is design? Um, so I just, I had to went around just see what other people's definitions of were, and you can find all sorts of things. This is the one I like most. So design is the process of envisioning and planning the creation of objects, interactive systems, buildings, vehicles, etc. So it's about 
making things or thinking about things that don't necessarily exist and it could be an aircraft it could be a user building it could be all sorts of things um but the there's a similar kind of process that goes in whether whatever you're making there's a similar kind of process and there's, there's no end of drawings on the internet of different things i picked three at random here of of what people have done pictures of what it looks like to do a um um a design process and and you may have done something like this at school where you sort of think up an idea develop it test it go back to the beginning but i think the key thing here is is that design isn't just a i'm going to draw a picture of it and then that's done it's very much you 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 start with a requirement of some sort you do some development work you test it go back to the beginning and great designers they still go around the loop a lot of times um it's just they may do it quite fast and they know how to make mistakes and how to learn from them and when you're learning design what's quite hard is to know when you move on to the next stage or do you go back to the beginning and you can't iterate forever but sometimes you have to commit yourself to something and make it and break it and and try again but then hopefully in this course you will be able to do that so the things you're making the rocket um the expectation is this will fall off um but you can test these you can test them in the lab you can test them in the field by sort of throwing your rocket up and see if parachute comes out and so on and, and then you can learn from that going back to the beginning and and no engineer engineer ever just sits in, a, in an armchair and designs something you always have to design it and go and test it and go back again and you find particularly with well both the wing and the rocket exercise the groups that do really well are the ones that just test things an awful lot and and go around around the loop and iterate and learn So this is a quite a lot of text on this slide, but I really like this, these definitions from these guys, um, um, Lincoln, Link Engineering. Uh, it's a random website I found, but actually they're really nice definitions of what it is, engineering design. So the first one repeated from before, it's a process. It's not an instant, it's a process. So it, it's a, it, and it's a flexible process that you could be designing a rocket one day, or you could be designing a boat or a house or a user interface or a procurement system and in many ways it's the same process on this course is not to make how to make a rocket or to to make a, a wing it's the general process of how you do design okay engineering design is purposeful it starts with an explicit goal if it was a journey it'd be with a specific direction it's not a random sightseeing trip okay so thing there is a particular goal you aren't just twiddling sketching something you're solving a problem and you are um you're solving a problem and going in a particular direction okay engineering design is designed under constraints so if it really is just a piece of paper and you're sketching something there really aren't any constraints but there's always nearly always constraints well there are always constraints when you're doing engineering cost weight gravity um you know what the person what the what the customer wants so there's always constraints in there and that's the skill of an engineer is about creating something that meets the requirements within the constraints so the most desired features and the fewest negative features you can never get rid of all the negative ones but you try and bias it so most of the um the, the features that you want are the good ones engineering design is systematic and iterative um so um it includes steps that can be repeated they're not always in the same order um so you've got planning modeling testing and improving um so you may do that you may do some testing it doesn't work you may go right back to the beginning replan something and, uh, and then jump back to testing again but the main thing is it's it's iterative and systematic and the last one there engineering design is a social collaborative enterprise that that makes it to these this this top list of five um so often done in small teams um with people with different kinds of knowledge and experience designers are continuously communicating with clients team members and others and that's really important because this work you're doing is dying you are doing it as a team and the reason for that is is this last bullet point that most design in the real world happens as teams so rarely do you get an individual sitting there designing something you know you're always part of a team whether you may have a somebody who's looking at the simulation of something maybe somebody who's 
and cost and planning. Um, but design takes place with a kind of social context of teams. And so the team working is part of the um, part of the learning outcomes of the design work you're doing. And the um, my favorite quote about teamwork, you've probably seen them all, but as if you want to get there quickly, do it on your own. If you want to go far, do it in a team. So quite often with teams, you think, oh, I'll just do it myself, it's quicker. And that's OK. But actually, the, the really great outcomes come from teams that work together properly. Uh, and they're the teams that really uh, make the rocket the stay up the longest or the wing that's the, the best designed. OK, so just some other context. Um, so this magma aircraft, which I mentioned before, just downstairs in the lab, um, designed by ex-students of this course that you're taking and just to give you some idea of the kind of put, put some of those bullet points in context the the requirements for this was somebody wanted to uh, our customer which is BA Systems wanted to demonstrate some fluidic controls so this idea that you can fly a plane without any moving parts and we had done built these in the lab but we needed an aircraft to to verify these um fluidic controls in flight. And there weren't many requirements. One of them was that the aircraft was relatively slow flying, so it could be flown by a manual pilot. And so to meet that requirement, we had to make sure that the, the wing loading was big enough. So it had a large wing for, for the weight. So it's a four meter span aircraft, but it only weighs about 40 kilograms. So we kept the weight down and that meant the undercarriage could be simple and so on. Uh, the other requirement was it, it had to be a kind of low observable shape, but it had to not pitch up when it stalled. And, and the chart you can see there with the red and green areas, um, the, the axes on that is sweep angle on the X white on the Y axis. And if you're on the red side of that curve, what it means is you stall, you actually pitch up. And that's pretty fatal for these type of tests. It's pretty fatal for any aircraft. So if you imagine you're in a turn and you, you, you pull a little bit too much G in your turn and you start to stall, and what happens is, is that you actually pitch up even more. So you rapidly stall and these things go from flying normally and then they suddenly pitch up to like 90 degrees angle of attack and then stop. You lose all your airspeed and the, the aircraft's lost basically because you never managed to recover them before they hit the ground. So we had to be on the other side of that curve. So we had to adjust the aspect ratio and, and the sweep angle. And the little star, we just managed to creep over the line, but that was enough that the aircraft was fairly docile, that when it did stall, it just kind of nodded down slightly and the uh, pilot was able to fly it. So the pilot's the guy with the, the orange high-vis jacket in the picture at the top. Um, a van on the... On the, the uh, on the slide there. And the, and the reason why the van there was the requirement was that the aircraft had to be transported in a sort of standard Bedford type of van. And that was an interesting constraint, which meant that we had to break up the, the aircraft into a number of different bits. And you can see on the, the, the line drawing, there's some kind of rod sticking out, held the wing on. And the, 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 the bit in the middle, uh, the kind of body bit, which is 1.1 meters wide, that was sized, so it fitted in the back of a van. And to do that, we actually had to adjust the aerodynamic shape of the aircraft to, to make the break exactly. The, the overall design of the aircraft was designed as much by aerodynamics and lift and drag and undercarriage as it was just the fact that we had to put it in boxes and move it, and that changed the overall design. But that, that's what engineers do. Um, just some other sort of real design stuff. So when the aircraft was made, it was originally done using made out of wood, um, but the entire budget, mass budget of the aircraft was blown. Uh, so it was then that made enough of composites. And the picture there is just showing um, what the students made in terms of how they made the wing out of sort of molded ribs and different bits and pieces. Um, and they made hundreds of test pieces before they committed themselves to that. So they didn't just know how to do it. They, they basically had to invent a way of joining and fabricating stuff. Um, so engineering design is mainly about practice. Um, there's a little bit of theory, you know, I can show you some process charts and, and some examples, but really you get good at design by practicing it. Um, 
So you're going to be given opportunities to do that through two practically orientated coursework projects. That's the rocket, as we've mentioned, and the wing design. And they're roughly 50-50 of the, of the unit. And by doing these activities, you're going to be able to learn and practice the art of design. You're going to be in a team throughout. Uh, it's a pre-assigned team. We'll get to that in the middle. And it's the same team um, for both activity. And the stuff you're going to have to do, you're going to have to skill up on quite a lot of engineering tools and processes that you, some of which you've seen before, but some of them you, you almost certainly haven't. Um, so a lot of the learning on this is you're going to be looking at tutorials on how to use say, a program for making or uh, running a simulation and oops unstable internet warning hope you can still hear me um so you're going to be studying uh these how these engineering tools work and processes and lastly you're going to be thinking about how you communicate these ideas in an effective way um, and yes team, teams are pre-assigned we'll get to that in a bit um, the assessment, 100% coursework, uh, you're going to be making a video and a flight test uh, for the rocket and the wing, it's another slightly different type of video and then you're going to have a sort of a online question and answer. The way I'm managing the group work is that you have to keep a group journal in Blackboard as you're going along. So. This is not individual reports from everybody, but there is the expectation is that as you're holding meetings, making decisions, um, that people use this group journal um, to post what they're doing. Uh, if there's an agenda for a meeting, you can put it up. If you've got a simulation working, you can post some results on there. And I need to see that to see evidence of people's contribution to the group. And I have found that's the best way of well, it, whether it's assessing or ensuring that people are, are contributing in the sense that just activity of showing up and doing stuff is the most important thing. And if you're there posting stuff, doing stuff with your group, that's a good sign. So you will get a group mark for your rocket. So on launch day, you will get a mark um, which is proportional to your time aloft. And the assumption is that everybody gets that group mark um, um, for the activity. Uh, as long as there's evidence to support they contributed to it. And, and where there is no evidence of somebody participating, then marks can be scaled accordingly. Okay, there's a course plan there, which I don't expect you to be able to read in detail, but that's available on a, um, on a link for you to look at. It's an Excel document. And what I've tried to do is just plan out what we're doing every week. Um, what the briefing session's about and and in the column you see on the right there is what you're meant to be doing for that particular week so just looking at the kind of the bars on the left um the yellow bits of the briefing sessions maybe 10 minutes depending on what we've got to talk about um but they're kind of briefing sessions not lectures and then the rest of that time we've got online is the chance for you to meet online with your group or get, or if your group agrees to get on with some of your own personal thing is design time where we'll kind of be online doing things. Uh, the green bits are the practical lab based activities where you'll get in and those bits are where you're kind of building the rocket stuff. Um, those are on a separate timetable and that should be actually in your personal timetable. You can see those lab sessions. So there's four different sessions uh, for the four different groups. So we've got the rocket and the wing design, the two main bits. And then in terms of assessments, they're, they're the ones in purple. Um, there is a quiz for both the rocket, the wing, I it was going to be a summative quiz. I decided in the end it was counterproductive because everyone just focuses on uh, doing the quiz rather than actually doing any teamwork. So there is a quiz there, but it's kind of form it, well, it is a formative quiz in the sense that if you can answer those questions, that means that you are doing the right things for your design. Okay, um, so we go through uh, even smaller further to the right. Um, we've got 
all the way up to Easter. We've got three weeks off after Easter. Then we come back after Easter and we've got three weeks there. Uh, and then the very last week of the semester is where we're doing our question and answer sessions. Um, there is a small gap between the rocket and the uh, wing design exercise. So you'll have four days where you're not doing any design whatsoever. So there's a little bit of a break in the middle where you can think about something else. Okay, and just to liven things up a bit. This is part of the simulation development okay um so the rocket activity um been doing this for for many years at the uh, one of the first things that the aerospace engineers do at manchester and it's a it's a it's a tough uh, challenge um but it's one of those things where um great engineers produce some great results from it so it's certainly not easy to make these things work but um if you solve enough problems you'll get something you'd be proud of so the way um the uh this activity is broken down we've got sort of five weeks for it and the kind of tools and tasks you'll be doing in this first week it's mainly going to be about excel um but the, the simulation the unity simulation so that's the, the thing we saw the rockets in before that was done in unity engineering design work in excel uh, and you're going to be setting up unity need to start running simulations so that's the gold bit and there's some stuff there on how you capture videos and make your own videos and then after three weeks, you submit a um, video which documents the design of your rocket so far. So you can use stuff from the spreadsheet and the simulator. Test phase. Um, so there's some solid work stuff that's in green there. Uh, you can start the solid works early if you want to, but the idea is intensively you're going to do some solid work design there sessions and you're going to be doing building and test design uh, and the rocket for, from that activity with you in a nutshell and then what do you actually do? I put this chart together, just to try and give an idea of kind of what the group work is like. Um, so I called it a study budget. You've normally got 50 hours on this. It doesn't quite work out with coursework. It's meant to be 10 hours per. Um, Okay, I'll um sorry if the quality is dipping in now. Anyway, so this uh what a typical team might be doing. And you've got uh if we start with the 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 brown one there, that's personal study. So within this project, you're gonna to have to do some learning and studying yourself. Um we've got group meetings ground testing so you've got some time spent testing in the lab online briefings blah 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 going around there's quite a big chunk for simulation work and then there's some for e-design because it's a team project you're not all going to be doing 
everything the same so that's if that was a sort of average person doing all the jobs that's what it might look like but when you're organizing your team um, you may be doing more of one thing in a particular um, task than another six people okay so the online learning resources um there's quite a lot of video tutorials to, to to help you on here these so these things are prepared for me just going through whether it's solid works or the simulation and there's a um they're all um linked in playlists um well, they're all on youtube at the moment actually that's the best way i found for them and watching those videos you can then uh get the most out of the tools you're using. So we've got Excel, Unity, SolidWorks, and then something about video development. Sessions on Monday, as I said, we're using for briefing um, and all the material you need to do the So the groups, people have been mentioning about the groups. So the groups are predefined. Um, so there's this Excel spreadsheet is available by the link in the briefing document or in this presentation if you've uh, got it on your computer or Blackboard. Uh, and if you go onto Blackboard, um, you then need to sign up to your group. So in a perfect world, In a perfect world, we'd sign you up on Blackboard, but actually what I've got is this spreadsheet and I'm asking you to sign up to your group. And that's the first test of your engagement that you are, uh, that you can actually sign up to your group. Um, if you make a mistake, you can't change that. Um, I have to change that. So if for any reason you accidentally sign up to the wrong group, you have to let me know and then I have to go into Blackboard and change it. So if you can try and concentrate when you're doing it and not make mistakes, that saves a lot of effort um, to get you time. Okay, so what next? Um,